For most of us, driving is an important part of our daily lives. It's the means to come and go as we please. Whether commuting to work or running errands, taking a family vacation, or just enjoying the road on a beautiful day, driving a car is simply part of what we do every day. Getting our driver's license was a rite of passage into an adult world of freedom and mobility. And learning to drive meant mastering a complex task requiring a unique combination of physical and mental skills. While everyone's reaction time, vision, and coordination diminish with age, neurological conditions like Parkinson's disease may have a greater impact on these functions and could have a significant effect on your ability to safely drive a car. After viewing this program, you'll have a better understanding of both the facts and the emotional issues to consider when you're making decisions about driving with Parkinson's disease. Intellectually, we know that driving is a privilege, but I think that our hearts and our guts tell us that driving is a right. I think it's really important um, to maintain your independence but not to the point where you're really foolhardy. I'm much more cautious about how I drive. I still drive around the city, but I don't trust myself on the highway. When, when I decide that I can't drive any longer, uh, I'm certainly going to feel uh, depressed, I guess. Yeah, I think it would be more like a, the sentence of a slow death. At Boston's Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, a Harvard Medical School teaching hospital, clinicians in the DriveWise program help Parkinson's patients and their families assess the relationship between their illness and driving. Good. We think of driving as an overlearned skill or procedural memory. It's a type of memory, like playing the piano, like typing, a skill that you learn over the course of many years and that you fine tune over time, and a skill that is, holds up well as we age. The types of problems that affect driving for patients with Parkinson's disease include visual scanning, the ability to scan the environment to anticipate when there is going to be a change, when someone needs to put on the brakes or when they need to speed up being able to listen to someone who's talking to you in the car or the radio while you're navigating a very complex route uh, while driving. Processing speed is also a problem that may be affected in Parkinson's disease and may affect driving. Look straight ahead and then I look at my finger here. And the major features or the major signs of Parkinson's disease are divided into basically four areas tremor, which is very well known to most people, bradykinesia, which means slowing of movement, uh, rigidity, which just means stiffness of muscles, and finally uh, postural instability, which has to do with impaired balance and, and walking. Those are the four major features. If you think about driving, uh, I think of those four, the one that impacts driving the most would clearly be bradykinesia or slowness. The extreme cases of someone who's profoundly slow, has great difficulty tapping their foot in a nice rhythm, you might predict they'd have trouble with the gas pedal, the accelerator. But sometimes there are patients who do poorly or seem slow or stiff in the office setting that do surprisingly well behind the wheel. Then there are patients that do rather well in the office setting and do poorly behind the wheel. It's probably related to the fact that there are multiple factors that enter into driving skills. And it's hard to sample all of them in an office setting. I noticed sometimes that when I went out for my daily walk, I would want to walk faster and I would tell my feet to walk faster, but I noticed that my feet were not paying attention to what I was saying. Well, not only is there the actual symptoms of the Parkinson's disease, but also the fact that medications can affect uh, the ability to drive virtually as much so as the, 
the uh, symptoms of the disease. I noticed that uh, after starting medications for Parkinson's disease that I would have fairly unexpected and very abrupt onset of fatigue and that uh, as there were times when I just couldn't keep myself awake, particularly when d driving distances. I find my vision sometimes can be a little fuzzier than normal, but I can still see, but it's just not as acute as it used to be. I miss racing, but I'm still driving at the moment and being aware that, that as things change, that, that uh, I will have to change as well. As one gets older, driving becomes more and more critical for independence, autonomy. In fact, the literature tells us that driving is probably the single most important marker for self-esteem in older individuals. It's important to note that not all patients with Parkinson's disease have significant cognitive problems. Some have very subtle cognitive problems and you need neuropsychological testing or some sort of systematic way of looking at someone in terms of their functional performance on tests of attention and tests of processing speed. You might ask a patient to draw a line between a number and a letter sequentially so that they go 1 to A, 2, B, 3, C, and so on. That type of activity may seem simple but it really does involve multitasking and processing speed, attending to two different information streams at a particular point in time and trying to do it quickly. That type of test has been shown to be very predictive of on-road driving performance. The DriveWise program at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center was developed in response to a need. Um, it was clear that patients came to us a lot of family members came to us. Physicians would call us saying that they needed an objective assessment about whether a person was still safe to drive. The goal of the DriveWise evaluation is to provide functional information about a person's driving competence using both laboratory-based tests and a standardized road test that takes 45 minutes where we observe we have an occupational therapist who goes out in a special car with a patient and we observe that patient on the road. In the driving scenario, family members are brought to their knees because in fact nobody wants to be the bad guy. An objective program can really help to tease out and sort out when is one still safe to drive and when is it no longer safe to continue driving. And this takes a lot of pressure and heat off of family members.